Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into your weekly dose of college football. The time has finally come, guys. It's been a long, hard offseason. Tomorrow night, Ohio State and Minnesota kick it off. We had the week zero. We had a few games. But tomorrow night, we finally get going with week one with all the big teams. And guys, let's get into some predictions right here. For week one, you've got the huge Clemson-Georgia matchup. I like that score prediction. I think Clemson wins a close, low-scoring game. Bama should easily beat uh, Miami. I don't know how Miami's ranked 15th. The one big upside of the weekend I have, I have Florida State over Notre Dame. I am not high on Notre Dame with Jack Cohn as the starting quarterback. I think they lose at least three games. Um, as an Ohio State fan, obviously we we hope they beat Minnesota. They're 14 point favorites. That's a it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a, a Thursday night game. Should be pretty good weather. I was seeing you know scattered thunderstorms, but not until late. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit nervous about the Minnesota game due to Minnesota's experience. They return a bunch of starters: Tanner Morgan, veteran quarterback. Ibrahim's a really good running back. Ohio State secondary is not good. C.J. Stroud has not thrown a pass in his career yet. So there's a lot of things that could cause a little bit of concern. But overall, I do like Ohio State winning that game. I hope they do. Um, LSU, I think they beat UCLA by a little bit more than that and really drums up the hype train there. I like Penn State over Wisconsin in a close one. That's going to be a really good game. I do like Old Miss to score 40 points and beat Louis, uh, Louisville. Uh, North Carolina, I like that prediction right there. I really do. And then I love Iowa to beat Indiana personally. And then here's just some more predictions. Pretty similar. This guy has Iowa beating Indiana. And he has actually Ohio State winning 41-17. to I don't think we hold Minnesota to 17 points. I'd love to be proven wrong, honestly. Um, so those are just some matchups there. Book it. Yeah, the playoff final four, the four teams that won in week one, or week zero, excuse me. How about UCLA destroying Hawaii? But guys, quick, quick mention on Nebraska. I, Adrian Martinez, have we ever seen a quarterback not develop literally at all I, like, I don't know if he's regressed, but like it, this is Adrian uh, Martinez's career trajectory. This is it right here. It's just, it's a straight, it's a linear straight line. He, the, you know, he starts as a true freshman. You think, okay, he's going to take his lumps. I understand that. The one key benefit of starting a true freshman is by the time he's a junior and a senior, he's experienced. With Adrian Martinez, he hasn't gotten any better. It's crazy. Nebraska, oh my God, you're up 9-2. to two. You get an interception. Nope, roughing the passer. Ridiculous. I don't know what to make of Nebraska and Scott Frost. They're already 0-1. They do face, I think, Fordham this week, so that'll be fun. The future of the Big 12. Yeah, they always do these Big 12 mocks. Boise State, uh, BYU. I don't think this would be like a Power 5 worthy conference, honestly. There's just not enough firepower in it. There really isn't. And it's only, you know, it, it is 14 teams, so seven teams per, uh, you know, West and East division. Uh, I just, there's just not enough firepower there, really. There realistically isn't. This is the playoff that I want to have implemented once Texas and Oklahoma join the SEC. Basically, it's a 12-team playoff with the first four teams getting automatic buys in round one. So you see Alabama getting a buy, facing either UCF or Washington, uh, Ohio State getting a buy. You can just kind of see how the format sets up. I think 12-team playoff is the future of college football due to Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC. They're going to have to expand the playoff due to the schedule imbalance we're going to see. Um, the SEC is going to have a lot harder schedules when Texas and Oklahoma join that conference. We already know they have the... Uh, best conference in college football, it's only going to get harder. Current SEC membership has an all-time record of 12-14-1 against current Ivy League membership. That's just a fun little fact. We know the Ivy League ran college football in the 1920s. As you can see, the last matchup between an SEC team and an Ivy League team was 1953. Uh, 2021 NFL Top 100, they released their Top 100 players for 2021. The schools with the most uh, players, Alabama's first, Ohio State, LSU tied for a second. I thought, I thought it was interesting. Iowa and Mississippi State both had four. I know one of them's definitely George Kittle for Iowa, and then Mississippi State, one of them's definitely Dak. But I thought that was just interesting to see Iowa and Mississippi State both tied for the third most players. Top 10 players in NFL Top 100 according to recruiting. It is crazy to see the amount of three stars and, and two stars. Travis Kelsey, a two star. 
Uh, Tom Brady, that was in 1996. They barely even had recruiting back then or any sort of services. Aaron Rodgers, a three-star. Derrick Henry, the only five-star on this list. Really interesting. DeAndre Hopkins was a four-star. But that stuff's really crazy. This is a remarkable picture. Ohio State in Big Ten games under Ryan Day. 15 games, they're 15-0. and Almost averaging 50 points per game. Per, the points per game difference per game 32. So Ohio State's beating teams by an average of 32 points since Ryan Day took over. Yards per game over 500. Out of the 15 games, how many 20 point wins? 12 of them. That is dominance. It's almost like I'm jinxing it and now they're going to lose to Minnesota, right? But that is crazy dominance shown from Ohio State. I thought this was remarkable. 2015 Alabama coaching staff, Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, Kirby Smart, Mario Cristobal, I mean, I didn't even, Mel Tucker was on that staff? That's a crazy staff, man. That is a crazy staff. So apparently Nebraska was going to lose their sellout streak. They have a sellout streak of 376 straight games. Uh, but two of their donors, two Nebraska donors, saved the streak for this weekend's game. Um, I kind of think that's cheap, honestly. I mean, you can't have people buying up a bunch of tickets, like one person buying up like 5,000 tickets to keep a sellout streak going. I know they're giving them to, you know, undeserved kids. That's great. I understand that. Uh, but that seems a little cheap to me, right? That's how you're going to keep a sellout streak going. I don't know. Ranking college football's 25 greatest programs of all time. These rankings are always interesting. Normally, you're always going to get Ohio State top two, Oklahoma top three, Alabama's normally always at least top five. It really just depends how much weight they put on like the 1930s. You see like Michigan, the 1930s, the 1940s, when some of these other schools were dominant. Uh, and then you can take a look at the back half of the top 10. Kind of surprised Penn State is in there at number nine. Breaking news, Scott Frost announces the addition of Bishop Sycamore to Nebraska schedule. Guys, I'm sure by now you've all known about the Bishop Sycamore story. I actually got out in front of it and released a, a, a you know really good video on it. And then ESPN got salty about it, claimed copyright when it was really just the first 22 seconds recorded off of, off of an iPhone of their screen. ESPN completely wiped out my video on Bishop Sycamore. But the whole Bishop Sycamore story is pretty crazy. Apparently, their head coach has an, an active arrest warrant. They played two games in three days. Most players are Juco dropouts who are nowhere near the high school age. And they lost 58 to nothing. And that's only because they were facing IMG on ESPN because their coach lied and said they had a bunch of D1 players and ESPN didn't vet them. Um, and then the only reason they only lost 58 to nothing was because IMG basically ran the whole, the ball the entire time the second half. Otherwise, it could have been like 98 to nothing. I mean, my goodness. Uh, this is hilarious. The address for Bishop Sycamore. It's a duplex apartment. <laughs> Dude, this is a hilarious. It just you just see the caption, the address for Bishop Sycamore, and it's a it's a it's just a duplex apartment. Oh my goodness, this is funny. Uh, Tulane six and four all time against Clemson. They haven't played six, since 1981, but that's funny. I love these graphs. Undefeated teams. That is every team in FBS, baby. I love when they do this before. Actually. <laughs> It's not every team in FBS because Nebraska lost lost already. No, I love Nebraska, man. I love their fan base. They have great fans, things like that. But no, I, I was going to say, this is every team. Actually, Hawaii wouldn't be on this list either, right? UConn, UConn got destroyed by Fresno State in Week 0. Almost every team is on this list. I'm sorry, almost every team is on this list. Teams Alabama has played and never beaten. They're 0-3 against Rice, ladies and gentlemen. They need to quickly schedule an out-of-conference game to beat Rice. <laughs> Ranking the SEC QBs, I think this is all void until the season starts. My guess is Bryce Young is going to end up as the best SEC quarterback, or at least top two minimum. Um, they have JT Daniels. The guys, the thing with Georgia that not many people are understanding, Georgia has, after that week one mega game against Clemson, a very easy SEC schedule. They're playing the SEC East schedule. The SEC East is pretty down this year. Um, so Georgia, while you could say people are saying, well, JT Daniels could win the Heisman, it's going to be very tough after that first game against Clemson. There's just not a lot of opportunities for JT Daniels to show out. And that's why I think Georgia is going to be kind of an underrated, under the radar team this year. There's just not a lot of big games on their schedule, guys. Don't believe me. Go look it up. I mean, seriously, there is just not simply not a lot of big games on that schedule. So here's a quote from Scott Frost that is uh, rather concerning. 
Uh, about half of our game plan was out the window when they lined up the way they did. Remember, this is the first game of the season. Uh, you should be preparing. Uh, so very, <laughs> dude, Nebraska. There, I feel so bad for Nebraska fans. I thought this was an interesting prediction. College football teams by record. Please, God, no. The last thing we need is UCF going 12-0 again. Please, Lord. How about Nevada and Carson Strong? San Jose State? The Spartans, 9-3? and three? Are you kidding me? Boise State only 7-5. and five. Michigan, 6-6. Six and six. I could see that. South Florida, 1-11. and 11. Normally, South Florida's pretty decent. I don't know. Uh, so, guys, this is. I thought this was a really interesting graph. The biggest blowout loss for every Power 5 school since 2000. I'm not going to you know stay on it for a long time. So, if you want to pause this and look, at, look up your team. I was interested to see Ohio State's biggest blowout loss is not the Iowa game. It is the USC game when USC had the number one team in the nation back in 2008. Ohio State and USC had a home and home. Ohio State lost both games, but the one at USC, 35-3. to That's pretty crazy. But I thought that was just interesting if you want to find your team. Alabama's biggest loss, obviously, the game, the two, the uh, you know national championship game. Trevor Lawrence as a true freshman, two or through a pick six, 44 to 16. We all remember that one. Now this is a very important list. So 247 Sports released their annual most talented teams, just based off of recruiting. This is the pure talent every single team has in college football, and you can just see how accurate college football recruiting has gotten. You take a look at those top 10 teams. Maybe LSU is really the only one, but Alabama is a top five team in college football. So is Georgia. So is Ohio State. So is Clemson. LSU could be there. Oklahoma, Florida, A&M, Georgia, USC. Looking at 11 through 20, Texas is a top 25 team. Notre Dame, Miami. I mean, these, all of these teams are just, it's crazy uh, how talented or how accurate college football recruiting has gotten. This is kind of like the entire roster's talent. So it's really cool. And guys, it is time for a new segment I'm going to be doing once a week. Your random five star of the week. How about Kyle Murphy? Class of 2012, number 11 overall player, offensive tackle. Uh, that went to the University of Stanford. Quinn Ewers, ladies and gentlemen. You guys don't know who Quinn Ewers is. Five-star quarterback, number one overall player in the nation that was originally part of the 2022 class, reclassified to 2021. He's an Ohio State commit. He signed a deal, I believe it was worth $1.4 million dollars were the final numbers. Quinn Ewers, who is a true freshman, he should be a senior in high school right now. This name image likeness stuff is crazy. It completely nuked the Ohio State quarterback room. Ohio State now has four quarterbacks with freshman eligibility. We're expecting at least two transfers. Obviously not C.J. Strout. He's going to be the starter. But probably Kyle McCord, who was another five-star, who's a true freshman, is probably transferring. And then Jack Miller is probably transferring as well. So Quinn Ewers gets a over $1 million deal. He should be a, you know, a senior in high school. It's crazy, guys. And guys, we have finally made it. It is time. Week one of college football. I'm very excited and also a little bit nervous for the Thursday night game, Ohio State and Minnesota. I know some Ohio State fans don't like that they're playing on Thursday night, but I love it, dude. You know, set up the season, you, you get the spotlight. I love that they're playing on Thursday night, and it's a tough opponent. You know, Minnesota is a veteran team. They're not ranked or anything, but it's one of those games, you know, it's going to be sold out. Minnesota wearing all black. They're going to have a little extra juice. I like those uniforms they're wearing. They're pretty sweet. Uh, so that should be a really fun game. Ohio State 14-point favorites in that one. We will see C.J. Strout's debut and then we've got the full slate on Saturday, guys. That is going to do it for your weekly dose of college football. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description, guys. I am, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.